So today we're going to learn about some how to apply some other angle relationships in circles. Now, our first slide, this theorem 1011, is actually what we learned yesterday. And this states that if a tangent and a chord intersect at a point on the circle, then the measure of each angle formed is one half the measure of its intercepted arc. So all this is saying is, let's say I told you that arc, let's say BCA, let's say this equals 250. Let me do it in blue. So then to find the measure of angle two, I would find half of that, and angle two is going to be 125. Now, to find angle one, I can do this two ways. I could e either realize that angles one and two together are sitting on a tangent line. So the fastest way to find the measure of angle one would just be to take 125 and subtract it from 180. And that would give me the measure of angle one equals 55 degrees. Another way I could have gone about doing this is figure out what this missing arc measure is. Realize that the entire circle is 360. So I could subtract that 250 and see that 110 is left for that arc. And then angle one would be half of that, which makes it 55. So always more than one way to go about figuring these out. If you went ahead and did the 180 minus the 125, then to find the arc measure, you could have just doubled the 55 and gotten 110 that way also. So again, there's always more than one way to fill these missing pieces out. Again, remember this number's not important. What the theorem states is what's important to us. All right, next one, this one actually has a name and this is called angles inside the circles theorem. Now to me, these two angles, one, two, and all their associated vertical angles, they sort of look like they're floating inside. So I'm gonna call these floating angles. This is just the name, it's not an official name, but it looks like they're sort of floating inside the circle. They're not central angles, they're not at the center, and they're not inscribed. So these are just floating inside the circle. Now, what they state is if two chords intersect inside a circle, then the measure of each angle is one half the sum of the measures of the arcs intercepted by the angle and its vertical angle. So here's what this means. So for example, if I tell you the measurement of arc DC is 80, and the measurement of arc AB is 40, to find the measure of angle one, I'm gonna use this formula. So the measure of angle one is equal to one half, the arc measure of DC, which is 80, plus the measurement of AB, which is 40, I'm going to add them and then divide by two or multiply by one half. So then this would give me the measurement of angle one is equal to 60 degrees. So this is 60. Now, if you recall back from before Christmas, we learned about vertical angles. So this side is also 60 because these are vertical. Now, to find the measure of angle two, what I could do is realize that one and two together are sitting here on a straight line. So I could do 180 minus 60 and figure out that the measurement of angle two is 120. Now let's say instead I gave you that AD was 120 and coincidentally enough, BC was also 120. So if I wanted to, instead of subtracting it from 180, I could also do this formula and do the measure of angle two is equal to one half AD plus BC. Now it was just coincidental that they were the same numbers. 
Um, notice the first time I did it to find angle one, it was 40 and 80. So this is just coincidental that it's the same, 240, and then half of 240 is 120. And that's the same answer I got when I realized that they were sitting on a straight line. So if you have an inscribed, the vertex is sitting at the side. Notice this is just floating somewhere in the middle. Okay, now a central angle, so they might say this is circle P, and then you can see if they say that this is circle P, you know that they name a circle by its center point. Mm -hmm. So then if you draw an angle there, then you know that would be a central angle. Okay. So these floating angles, this would be inscribed when the vertex is on the side, and then this is central when the vertex is at the center. Okay. Next is theorem 1013, and these are angles outside the circle theorem. And this angle, and these are all, the, the angle that they're talking about is angle one, and it's outside on all three pictures. This angle one is formed in this picture by two secants. This angle one in the middle picture is formed by two tangents. And the last one is formed by one tangent and one secant. And then the equation is this. However, I'm gonna shorten it up. I'm gonna call this equation big arc minus little arc divide by two equals the outside angle. So instead of having these X's and Y's, I'm gonna call it big arc, little arc, and divide by two equals the outside angle. The formula is the same for all three scenarios. So notice the X in their formula, this X degree is the big arc. So in all of my pictures, this is the bigger arc in this picture. This would be the bigger arc, bigger arc. And then little arc, which is the Y, would be this little piece, this little piece, and this little piece outside angle that they're referring to is this one over here where either your two tangents meet your two secants or your secant tangent on this next slide there is a typo this isn't the word us it should be the word is so ut is tangent to the circle so it wants me to find arc measure wt which is here. Then it wants me to find angle TVS. So TVS is here. And then it wants me to find RVS, which is here. And then it also wants me to find arc measure RS. So these are the four things that I'm going to try to find. So the first thing I'm gonna do is find arc WT. So for this one, I'm gonna use that big arc minus little arc. Divide by two equals that outside angle. So for the first one, part A, over here is my angle. It's formed by a secant and a tangent. So I'm gonna do outside angle, which is 30, and then I'm gonna call, this is big arc, the 100, and this right here that I'm looking for is my little arc. So big arc is 100, little arc I'm gonna call it X, divide by two. First thing I need to do is get rid of the fraction, so I'm gonna multiply both sides by two. So I get 60 is equal to 100 minus X. Subtract the 100. Negative 40 
equals negative x, divide by negative 1, x equals positive 40. So little arc is now 40 degrees. Let me erase these words, and I'm going to put in the measure of little arc. So I'm going to put a 40 here now. Next, it wants me to find TVS. So TVS is right here. So this one, this is my floating angle. So for part B, I'm going to do this intercepted arc plus this intercepted arc and divide by 2. So 100 plus 110 divide by 2. 210 divide by 2 and this is 105. So this angle is 105 degrees. Now to find this green angle, RVS, yeah. Okay, so just remember your figures are usually never drawn to scale. All right, now to find RVS, the green angle, realize that we can do this more than one way. We could either use our um, information that we just learned, or we can realize that these two are sitting on a straight line. So to find this, I could just do 180 minus 105, and RVS is 75 degrees. That's the easiest way to do it. Then to find arc RS, find arc RS, I can do two things here. Realize I have almost the entire circle, circle filled in, and I know that the entire circle adds up to be 360. So what I could do is I could add 110. And let me do this. 110 plus 40, plus 100, and then RS, I could say, is X, plus X equals 360. Once I add these, I get 250 plus X equals 360. Subtract 250, and X equals 110 degrees. So that's the measurement of RS. The other way would have been to add those two intercepted arcs and divide by two. The other way I could have done D is I realize, realize that you have the 40, you've got the angle, what we don't have was this. So I could have done the formula where you take the two arcs, add them, divide by two, and it gives you the floating angle. So again, multiply both sides by two, to get rid of the fraction, 75 times two is 150, subtract 40, and that missing arc is 110. Same answer I got by adding up all the pieces and subtracting from 360. Yes. All right, this one, it wants us to find the measure of angle D. So angle D is formed by two tangents. So they're giving me the measurement of arc AB, which is 105. So for this problem, I'm going to do the big arc minus little arc. Divide by 2 is going to give me angle D. Now, notice I only have little arc. But whenever you have this, the case where there's two tangents, if you know one of the arcs, to find the other arc, subtract it from 360, and that's going to give you the other missing arc. So the big arc is what's remaining, and it's the 255. So now big arc, 255 minus little arc, which is 105, divide by 2, equals angle D. 255 minus 105 is 150, divide by 2, and angle D equals 75 degrees.
This time they want us to find the measure of arc AB. So AB is here. Notice again, these are now two secants. So again, I'm gonna use the formula big arc minus little arc divide by two. And that gives me outside angle. So I'm gonna do big arc, which I don't know, I'll call this X. Little arc is 20, divide by two, equals the measure of outside angle, which is 10. First thing I wanna do is get rid of the two. So then I'm left with X minus 20 equals 20. Add 20 to both sides and my missing arc of AB is 40 degrees. Okay, so, so far, and I'll zoom in here, we've talked about central angles. Remember your central angle has its vertex at the center. The measurement of the central angle equals the arc measure. So if the measurement of angle one is 60, its corresponding arc measure is also 60. Next, we learned about inscribed angles. Inscribed angles have their vertex sitting on the side of the circle. The measurement of the angle is always going to be half the arc. So we could say angle, let me do this in red. So the angle, when it's inscribed, is equal to one half the arc. So if our angle is 30, then um, the arc would be double that, so it would be 60. Then the next thing we talked about was a tangent and a chord. And here we knew that the angle that's formed by the tangent and the chord is always going to be equal to half of the arc measure. So if angle 1 is 50, then its arc is 100. Down here by the B. Um, this is the one right here. So it's the angle formed by the tangent and the chord. The whole thing? All right. And then the purple one, these are the floating angles. And this is what we learned today. And remember, we took the intercepted arc of the angle we're looking for and its vertical intercepted arc, add them, divide by two. And then we have the three scenarios where you have two secants or a secant and a tangent or two tangents, and that's the big arc minus little arc, divide by two, and it gives you the outside angle. So this is just a summary of what we've covered so far. These are the different angles that we've covered. Wait, percent what?